Well, howdy, folks. It's good to see y'all. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is April 30th. It is Tuesday, and you're watching On Top and Hot, where we like to focus in on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks all day from bell to bell. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on every market. And I'm constantly keeping my eye open for a stock that has heat, a stock that has potential to make us money. And dare I say, I exceeded again. <laughs> this is ticker OPTT, Ocean Power Technologies. Now, this company is a lot like the company we looked at yesterday, not because of what they do, but because of the situation they're in. This company is undervalued. Yesterday, we looked at a company that was undervalued, WKSP, WorkSport. She was looking good. The chart had taken a trend change. We had strong revenue growth. We had contracts they were engaged in. We had positive stockholder equity. I couldn't see any reason not to look at the stock, and I'm glad we did. She took off today, folks. We had 44% gains just before the bell, and as you can see, she is in the midst of a breakout right now. So now is not the time to stop looking at WKSP. But back to OPTT. Ocean Power Technologies is in the exact same boat. She's got all the same things going. Lots of contracts she's engaged in. Positive stockholder equity. The chart is changing. There's lots of reasons we need to look at this right now. OPTT, she finished today just a little over 19 cents. And she dropped a little less than 4%. She is on the major exchange, the New York Stock Exchange, which comes with benefits compared to the OTC. First off, all your transactions for shares, buying and selling are free. Second, you can play the pre-market, aftermarket periods. You can't do that with OTC stocks, and there's a lot of money to be made on them bounces pre-market. There's a lot more money and a lot more volume up on the major exchange, which is just going to give more liquidity to your stocks. And last and definitely not least, it's safer on the major exchange. A lot more rules, a lot more oversight. So what does OPT do? Jumping into the most recent news press to get this description, OPT provides intelligent maritime solutions and services that enable safer, cleaner, and more productive ocean operations for the defense and security sector, oil and gas, science and research, and offshore wind markets. Our power buoy platforms provide clean and reliable electric power and real-time data communications for remote maritime and subsea applications. We also provide WAM-V autonomous surface vessels and marine robotic services. The company has headquarters in Monroe Township, New Jersey, and an additional offices in Richmond, California. Now, jumping on over to their website, we get some more information here. This is a picture of their buoy, and it is quite outfitted, folks. It has an AIS antenna. It has high-definition and infrared cameras. It has a transponder, Wi-Fi, radar, satellite communications, 4G, and 5G. And get this, it produces its own power. From maritime border enforcement and illegal, unreported, unregulated fishing protection to securing and monitoring offshore wind farms and oil and gas fields, government agencies and offshore operators can all benefit from the cost-effective, always-on intelligence about sensitive areas and offshore investments in remote areas. Now, taking a look at the products that they've got here, and then I'll show you what they can do. They've got their power buoy. This is a device that is self-contained. It has everything in it. The power buoy can act as an uninterruptible power supply, which constantly recharges itself by harvesting energy from the waves. It is ocean deployed, moored, and floats over the point of use and can operate in any ocean depth over 20 meters and up to 3,000 meters. Then they have their autonomous wave runners, if you will. Through our marine advanced robotic subsidiary, OPT offers the WAM-V, which is also called the Wave Adaptive Modular Vessel, an innovative class of autonomous surface vehicles that use an articulating suspension system to minimize structural loading. Now, these are basically the same as the buoys. 
they've got all the same equipment on them, plus you can add more equipment. You know, maybe you wanted to add <clears throat> offensive weapons. I mean, you could. You could add anything you wanted to these. And these are connected to the buoy, so they're all working together, and they work with other boats, so they could be doing like a secure perimeter around something out on the outside of our shorelines, making sure nothing comes in. And then last but not least, where's that power go? To a battery that sits on the ocean floor. Can you imagine that? The Opt Subsea Battery is an economical and reliable way to power subsea payloads with energy stored in a high capacity, zero maintenance, thank God for that, it's on the bottom of the ocean floor, and environmentally friendly lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now, what are they doing with these things? Well, they're doing a lot. They are working with security and defense, as you would imagine. These are great for monitoring that big, wide open water out there. Maritime domain awareness and offshore and shoreline border security represent a daunting challenge considering the vast areas to be monitored. So you've got this buoy out there which com can communicate to anybody who has a right to communicate to it, no matter where they are, as long as they're within the zone. You can be in the air, you can be on the water, you can be on land. Offshore wind. Offshore wind is a quickly growing focus area for renewable energy supply. Autonomous OPT solutions can provide cost-effective assistance through all phases of site planning and development. They are also involved with offshore oil and gas. As electrification grows in the offshore oil and gas industry, the need for autonomous and zero or low carbon power sources increases, especially as maritime energy exploration activities migrate farther away from the shorelines and into deeper waters. And then of course, they are using this for science and research. Efforts are underway to map the oceans for increased understanding of our climate change ecosystem health, available fish stocks, energy resources, and weather patterns. Folks, the amount of data that we're going to get from this is just unbelievable. Out there on the open seas, there's a lot of information we just aren't gathering, and now we're going to be able to do it. From security to how much fish is available in this area. It is amazing. So the company's doing a lot with a lot of different products, and we're going to see about that when we get to the news. Right now, let's take a look at that stock. Bouncing on back here to the OTC markets. You know, folks, this is honestly where I start all my research for any stock, whether it be OTC or major exchange. They carry information for all of them. So we are looking at the major exchange stock, Ocean Power Technologies, and we're getting a rendering on her relative volume right now. Over the last 30 days, she's been averaging about 700,000 shares a day. Today, she pumped it up to just about 1.2 million. Excitement is building up right now. Share structure for OPTT. Hey, that ain't looking bad. Outstanding share count is barely 60 million shares. Now, I have no clue what the float is, and I'm not worried about that. I know it's not going to be higher than the outstanding share count. And anything under 100 million, honestly, I'm happy with. Yes, I do appreciate a low, low float. But if you can keep it under $100 million, I'm content. So we're looking good here. Market cap for the company, we're just approaching $12 million. Financials for the company. Well, it looks like they've had some ups and downs over the last four years. 2021 was their low point, down to $1.2 million. We know that's millions and not thousands because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. And their 2023 annual report, they came in at a high of 2.7 million. Now, what's most important here is they finally stopped losing money. They were losing money every single year until 2023 when they brought in some profits. Not a lot, 236,000 out of 2.7 million. But it's a change, it's a start. Taking a look at those quarterlies. Well, they're continuing that profit taking. At the end of 2023, they lost a little, but they got back on track bringing in those profits. And hey, look at the revenues. At the end of October 2023, they were roughly 900,000. At the end of January 2024, they'd nearly doubled that to 1.8 million. Well, they haven't ever doubled their revenues. So that was a huge jump. Taking a look at the balance sheet. 
And let's not forget those three zeros over here as well. Cash in the bank, they've got roughly $5 million. Lots of current assets, lots of long-term assets. Add them all together, we got about $35 million in assets. Total liabilities, oh yeah, it's under $10 million, 9.3 which means we do have positive stockholder equity in this company of 25 million. Let's go take a look at those disclosures. Now we've got a few disclosures over here. Two of them we absolutely have to take a look at. Now this is a very unusual and very important filing. This was actually filed by the largest shareholder of the company and they're a little upset to say the least. This came out April 22nd. Paragon Technologies is a diversified holdings company and the largest shareholder of Ocean Power Technologies. The company calls on OP to immediately cease any future dilutive equity issuances. No more public offerings. Do not put any more shares on the market. Instead, engage with Paragon to save OP shareholders from a total loss and the company from permanent financial ruin. That ain't sounding very optimistic. Today, Paragon Technologies announced its willingness to invest up to $3 million in non-dilutive preferred equity in OPT to save the company from likely insolvency and put the company on a path to finally delivering value for its shareholders. They go on to say, we are prepared to put real money into OPT and do it quickly. And they weren't kidding there. They put their money right where their mouth was. This is a 13D. It's like a 13G. These are filed whenever new ownership is acquired. Now, I'm not quite sure why they filed this because Paragon already owns a ton of shares, but it was filed and they show us that Paragon just acquired 2.1 million shares, about 3.7% of the company. And they say that the total cost for purchasing the common stock reported here by the reporting person, Paragon, was approximately $1 million. The source of funds was from the reporting person's working capital. You got to appreciate people who put their money where their mouth is immediately. Now, the company has a lot of news and we can't go through it all. I'm picking up the news from April 9th, but there's a ton of it going back further. So do your due diligence, folks. Read all that news we're not touching on to. And the fact of the matter is we're not going to jump into all of these either. We just don't have that much time. But I do want to headline these and dive into one of them. So starting on April 9th, RedCat begins integration of TO2 drones with Ocean Power Technologies Maritime Surveillance Solutions for air, sea, and subsea defense and security missions. It's just the next logical step. You've got this stationary powered buoy, then you've got these wave runner boats out there. All you need are drones and you're covered. Perfect. This is with regard to the filing we just read. Paragon Technologies files a complaint alleging Ocean Power Technologies failed to achieve a legitimate quorum at its annual meeting of shareholders. That was a tidbit I didn't read and I don't fully understand it. There was a shareholder meeting. You have to have them to meet a criteria, but Paragon Technology says that shareholder meeting didn't count. So I guess they have to have another one. Another piece of news here, the company announces teaming agreement with major international defense contractor to deploy maritime domain awareness solutions. Now, this is a very generic news press. They don't tell us the name of the defense contractor. Uh, they don't tell us where it's going to be used. They said some region globally. I mean, it's very generic. All we know is that they've got a contract with a defense contractor. That's it. The next piece of news tells us that the company is participating in a NATO Digital Ocean Industry Symposium. This is a convention over in Europe being held in Belgium, I believe it is. And this is great. I mean, they got lots of water over there too. There's lots of coastal countries that could make use of this technology. On the 22nd, Paragon calls on Ocean Power to cease any and all future equity raises. Yes, no more public offerings. On the 24th, the company unveils versatile new generation of buoy systems. They're improving them. 
They're now making them be able to run on alternative power sources like solar panels. I think we had a picture of that at the very beginning, a buoy with solar panels on it and other things as well. You want the information? There's the news press for you. And the last piece of news, Ocean Power Technologies awarded multi-year NOAA ProTech Oceans ID IQ contract. A lot of acronyms there. Let's dive into this piece of news and see what they're trying to tell us. The company today announced its selection as part of a team awarded the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration's contract. There's actually a lot of other words in that contract. This award positions opt within an elite group of service providers supporting NOAA's mission to understand and predict changes in climate, weather, oceans, and coasts. The contract has a minimum duration of five years with an early potential of several million dollars per year in revenue. Now catch this next line. The overall ProTech IDIQ, which stands for Indefinite Delivery, Indefinite Quantity. It's an open-ended contract. The overall ProTech has a ceiling of $8 billion, providing ample opportunities to supply into NOAA. So right now they're in and they're going to be making a few million every year, but things could get bigger and bigger. And NOAA is up to $8 billion in the budget to work with. This IDIQ awarded is a mandatory use vehicle for NOAA and may also be utilized by other bureaus within the U.S. Department of Commerce. It allows for a variety of other contract types as well. So this is a huge contract. It started off at a couple million, could go into the billions. We have no idea. When you start working with the government, they've got some very deep pockets. They can spend money they don't have. So do your due diligence here, folks. There's a lot of news. They've just got with Red Cat. They've gotten with other companies. They're expanding their products. They're improving them. There's just a lot going on with the company and they're growing. Their revenues are bouncing. We have positive stockholder equity and the chart is starting to show some strength. Let's go take a look at that. Who's ready to do some charting? <gasps> me, 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 me. <laughs> We're taking a look at ticker OPTT. This is Ocean Power Technologies, and we're going to chart it on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. Got this opened up to a six-month, four-hour view, and even with all that volatility, you can see she's been in a downtrend the entire six months. Now, it was about five and a half months ago, we had a high of 62 cents, but that was short-lived. It was a spike shooting up over the 200 and coming right back down. I think our high is actually closer to 52 cents, but hey, the high bubble's there. And then we got a low here on April 19th, just under 18 cents. Now, I thought she was going to break out back here. When you see the 200-day SMA finally level out and go flat, that's normally when you see your breakouts occur. And it wasn't for lack of trying. She was up and down over this 200 quite a few times, even with some huge jumps, and just couldn't get it going. Always came back down under the 200, and finally coming down to that low bubble here. Now, what's kind of funny, these big spikes. We got one here, one here, and one here. Would you believe that all three of them are near 50%. Yes, the higher the price, the higher it has to jump to get that sort of increase. So each one of these is like 50% as she's been falling. Now, once she hit that low bubble, she quit falling. That's the end of our downtrend. Now she is going sideways. She has broke out from underneath all of her SMAs through the 200 haul, through the 50, shot up towards that 200 and then fell back. Now, she has fallen back, and she's come down to this 200 haul, sitting on her 20. Now, I got to tell you, folks, that 200 haul probably isn't on your charts, and it should be. This has a lot of authority on the board, especially with penny stocks. The 200 haul is a lot like your 200-day SMA. Both of them take 200 days of prices and average them all together, but the 200 haul puts more credence on current prices, so you end up with a different long-term line, which has the same authority as the 200-day SMA. 
And what we've been seeing a lot of here is that the price will come down to the 200 haul and it'll bounce off of that 200 haul directly straight to the 200 day SMA and on top. So this isn't looking all that bad actually. Volume is pretty light right now, no doubt about that. And our oscillators, well, they're not hot or cold. Everything is just kind of going sideways right now, waiting for something to happen. Take a look at our 20 day, one hour view. So there's our downtrend, our huge pop. Where did that pop go from? She went from 23 cents up to 35 cents. You're looking at 50% run right there. Hit that low bubble jumped up, got on top of the 50 day SMA, laid on that for a few days and then broke through the 200 day SMA and came down no lower than where she started. That's very important folks. When I see a jump to the 200 and then a long wick spit out over the 200, when she falls back down, if the next bar does not come down any lower than where she started from, I take it as a serious token sign that she's going to run as soon as she gets an opportunity. What's that opportunity? Well, it could be a hot press release. It could be a filing, but I'm talking technicals. I'm talking about that 200 day SMA going flat and she's helping herself by putting these spikes way up there because there's a string attached to the top of this price to every single SMA. The higher it goes, the more it tugs those SMAs up until they're flat and she creates an opportunity for herself and then she takes off. Oscillators on our one hour, they're a bit cool. They're actually falling right now, not hard and fast, but they are cooling off right now. And our 200 day is still creeping down. I don't see any leveling off on her right yet. Take a look at our five day, five minute. So she's going sideways here for many a days, just hanging around the 200 above it, below it, but not really going anywhere. Then she pushed up away from the 200 and she adopted the 50 day SMA as her new one to sit on. She bounced off of that, getting this big run. First thing this morning, she went from 19 cents to 24 cents. You're looking at about a 25% jump there, coming back down and then falling the rest of the day. And right now she is curving around, looking like she's getting set to start running again. Now, I'm not really expecting this stock to run tomorrow or the next day. It could. I wasn't expecting WorkSport to take off as fast as it did. But these undervalued stocks are being noticed. And when they get close to the 200, when things start setting up, you have more people looking at the stock. I did. I saw the chart was getting hotter, so I looked at the information. I see she's got hot information. I can see she's undervalued. It's one we need to watch. So you need to put this on your watch list. Even if she doesn't run tomorrow or the next day, watch for that volume to start coming in. It's very low right now, so it won't be hard to see. When that volume starts coming in, she breaks out over that 200 and starts to float on her nine day SMA. You may want to consider getting in. Oscillators on our five day, five minute, they're doing the same thing. They're a bit cool. They are edging down right now. Everything looks like she's right at that point of making a decision. I like OPTT. They're doing a lot. Everybody is going to want this. I mean, the governments in any country that is on the water is going to want this. It's the best way to monitor your open waters. It's the best way to communicate amongst other vessels. OPTT is looking good to me, but it needs to look good to you. So do your due diligence, folks. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. Thank you.